Trade. What's up guys, today I get to show you the brand new Milsig HR3 CO2 powered Nerf pistol. These will be stocked in the US by Frontline Foam and here in Australia by Tactical Edge Hobbies. Milsig's recommended retail price for the pistol itself is 249 US dollars and the ammo that it fires can be bought in packs of 200 for a recommended retail price of 38 US dollars. But you'll have to check on both of those retailers websites of whether they keep to that pricing or not. The HR3 is designed to fire 13mm squishy reusable round balls, which Milsig calls Hydrom. These could also easily be fired out of almost any other Nerf blaster, but whether they're actually good or not is something I'll test later. The magazine allows 10 Hydrom balls to be loaded. They simply push in from the top and are spring fed into the blaster. When you're loading up the magazine, you can actually turn that follower to the side and it will lock down, and when you insert it into the blaster, it'll release. In addition to firing Milsig's Hydron balls, it can also fire any standard nerf dart just by muzzle loading them. And I'll do a comparison of Hydron versus darts later in the video. To use the blaster, first you want to install a 12 gram CO2 bulb into the magazine. It slots in from the side with the nozzle facing up, and then you tighten the screw on the bottom until it holds and pierces the CO2 bulb. With the magazine loaded with your Hydron balls, insert it into the blaster. Each CO2 bulb will last you about 50 shots. The HR3 is a semi-auto non-blowback pistol. That means the slide doesn't reciprocate when firing and you actually cannot physically move it. It's solid on the bluster. Being non-blowback has its benefits such as being more efficient on CO2 and a little quieter. It does sacrifice a little on the realism side of things though. Having an open bolt design, the moment you insert the magazine into the pistol, it's ready to simply fire by pulling the trigger. Once you insert the magazine into the blaster, the first two shots actually feed up into the blaster itself rather than staying in the magazine. What I thought this meant is I'd be able to remove the mag and load it up again and get a plus two for a total of 12 shots in the 10 round magazine. But it turns out there's actually a safety mechanism that when you remove the magazine, those two balls fall out. That also means tactical reloads will be slightly annoying because you have to catch your two balls when you remove a partially loaded mag. Speaking of safety mechanisms, up above the trigger at the front here, there's a manual safety. Push it in from the left to put it onto safe, physically cannot pull the trigger. And to turn the safety off again, push it in from the right, and you'll see that there's actually a red indicator to say it's ready to fire. There isn't really an easy way to tell when you're empty on the HR3. Being non-blowback, the slide obviously doesn't lock open to tell you. You can still pull the trigger when there's no ammo left, and the only indicator is a hole on top which you can see through to the currently chambered ball. Kind of hard to see on the camera though. So when using this blaster, I definitely try counting your shots so that when you get to 10 shots, you can just change the mag and not accidentally fire nothing at an enemy player. The metal barrel has a 13 millimeter internal diameter and it's threaded halfway along its length. What this allows you to do is remove the front half of your barrel if you want a lower muzzle velocity. Pretty cool. At the front of the barrel, it also has a thread under this black cap. That'll allow a rifling scar barrel milsiger releasing in a few months time to be attached to the blaster. Up top, there's a Picatinny rail, which I've added a small red dot side onto to help with aiming. There's also a rail segment on the bottom, which is ideal for adding a flashlight. The majority of the blaster, including the non-moving slide, the lower and the magazines are all made of thick nylon. And the HR3 feels really high quality to hold in the hand. Over the chronograph in stock configuration, here's how the Hydron ammo from Milsig shoots. 296, 279, 279, 276, 270, 264. Got a high of 296, a low of 264, and an average of 277. With the front half of the barrel unscrewed and removed, Here's the lower velocity that this blaster can shoot with Hydron ammo. 205, 197, 192, 187, 181. With the front half of the barrel removed, we got a high of 205, a low of 181, 
and an average of 195. I actually ended up using the pistol most of the day with the front barrel unscrewed, just so it didn't hurt players as much. Now let's test the velocity with some foam darts, simply just quickly loaded into the front of the barrel with your finger. 160. 164. And 167. Got a high of 167, low of 160, and an average of 163. And finally, here's how foam darts shoot fully pushed into the barrel with something like a pen. 290. Two eighty one and two eighty four. I got a high of two ninety, a low of two eighty one, an average of two eighty five. The average is a little higher with the foam darts, but that makes sense seeing as they're one gram and the hydron balls are one point two grams. At a distance of twenty meters, here's how hydron ammo shoots for accuracy. Hydron ammo at 20 meters shot a grouping about 110 centimeters wide and 125 centimeters high, which is actually pretty bad for a Nerf blaster. At the same distance, 20 meters, let's see how muzzle loaded foam darts shoot in comparison. With foam darts, I shot a grouping about 60 centimeters wide and just over 100 centimeters high. Darts are significantly more accurate than hydron balls, but let's head back inside for some final thoughts. In terms of velocity, this is the hardest hitting semi-auto nerf pistol that I know of. Unfortunately, it's really let down by the poor accuracy of hydron balls, and I'd say it's pretty much on par with any flywheel secondary. If this instead shot darts from the magazine rather than these round balls, you could therefore add a rifling scar barrel to the end of the barrel. And this would have been a game changer, just like its older brother, the Milsig M79 rifle. But in its current state, it's only good within about 20 meters. I'm gonna end the video now with some gameplay. Seeing as it's only really useful in CQB, I opted to shorten the barrel so it doesn't hurt unnecessarily much. For those who are interested though, the balls fired out of the full barrel hurt about 20% more than a standard nerf dart fired out of the same barrel. Which makes sense since they're about 20% heavier. Enjoy the gameplay. Shit, that was red! Friendly. That doesn't even hurt there. Oh, Feel that one? Woo! Oh, yep. Ah, 
Gotcha. You've got to build that first one. You've got it on 240 again, haven't you? Yeah, oh, it's actually about 180. Head coming down. It's about 180 with a half barrel. Alright. Let's sneak through the maze. Yes. I think I got you. You're, bl you're blue, aren't you? Yep. Keep forgetting. Oh. We've got no one guarding it, have we? Coming past. Yeah, both of them. Trade. That's it for this one, guys. Click on my profile icon to subscribe. Otherwise, here's two other videos that you might also enjoy. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.